Hello and welcome to Chrome Computing. In this video we'll be looking at budget Chromebooks. Budget Chromebooks and what you need to look for when buying one in 2020. So if we go back to 2011, and that's when the Chromebook was originally launched, the only option you had back then was a budget Chromebook. Things have changed over the years as Chrome OS, the operating system that Chromebooks use, has advanced. You now get budget Chromebooks, mid-range Chromebooks, and high-spec Chromebooks. But that doesn't mean you can't still get a great budget Chromebook. When a lot of people think of budget, immediately they might think, does that mean it's inferior, it's not a good product? There's some truth to that, but it's not actually completely true. Because as long as you know what you're buying, whether you're spending a thousand pounds or you're spending 300 pounds, 300 dollars, you can still get a great Chromebook. You just need to know what to look for. So let's look at the main things that you should be looking for when buying a Chromebook. And I would say the things you should be looking for is the build quality, is the first thing you should be looking at. Then you should be looking at the performance. That includes the processor and it also includes the RAM because you, the, the RAM and the processor need to work together. The storage as well is something that you need to look at. And personally, I think one of the main things is the display. You're going to be looking at this Chromebook, this laptop, a lot. So you want the display to be really good. And that's something that is definitely important to look for as well. Other things to look for is the keyboard. If you need a laptop to type on, you want a keyboard that's responsive. And the ports, what, what the connections are on the Chromebook that you're buying. I would say they're the main things you need to be concerned about when buying a budget Chromebook or any type of Chromebook or laptop computer. So this video is all about buying a budget Chromebook and what to expect when you buy a budget Chromebook. It will mean that there will be some sacrifices along the way, generally speaking but it's about knowing what sacrifices to accept and what sacrifices perhaps you won't want to accept. And that's what this video is all about. So the first thing we we'll look at is build quality. Now, it would be in 2020, you would expect a good build quality from any Chromebook, whether that's budget range up to the high spec range. What you will most likely see on a budget Chromebook is it won't necessarily be aluminium or any other type of metal. Most of them, not all of them, you can get aluminium ones, but a lot of them may have plastic bodies. Now that's not necessarily a bad thing. You know, you've got to consider the money that you're paying for the laptop. So just because it's plastic doesn't necessarily mean it's, it's bad. As long as the build quality is good, then you know, you, you, you're fine. The next thing you need to look at is the performance. And the first thing would be the processor. Nearly every type of budget Chromebook you will get will have an Intel Celeron processor or a processor similar to an Intel Celeron, but about 90% of them do have the Intel Celeron processor. That's the first thing you need to accept when buying a budget Chromebook. You will not get a budget Chromebook with an Intel i5 processor. Well, you wouldn't because it wouldn't be a budget Chromebook. It would cost hundreds more. So that's the first thing to consider. Now that doesn't mean that if you buy an Intel Celeron processor that the Chromebook still won't perform as it needs to. It depends on what you're looking to do. If you're looking to surf the internet, if you're looking to do some word processing, if you're looking to do work on some spreadsheets, watch some videos on YouTube, if you're looking to use Android apps, you shouldn't have a problem with an Intel Celeron processor. Don't get me wrong, so the more advanced Android apps, such as games and maybe some really intense graphic software, that may push the Intel Celeron processor a bit. So that's the one thing you need to consider. But generally speaking, day-to-day -day stuff on an Intel Celeron processor is absolutely fine. Where you may see a bit of an issue is if you start multitasking too much. And by that, what I mean is if you have a browser open and you open up another browser, you go onto Facebook, you go onto YouTube, you go onto Spotify, then you may see that the, you know, the Intel Celeron processor will show you that it's not as fast as performance as what you'd expect from a more higher priced laptop. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. You know, you are buying a computer that you can get a Chromebook, a really decent Chromebook, under £300, $300, even down to 250 
and that's that's really good value for a laptop when you consider we're in 2020 that's a really good price for a laptop so that's the one thing you need to remember that most likely it will be an intel Celeron processor don't let that put you off you wouldn't expect anything more than that now we look at the ram when it comes to ram you used to be able to get budget Chromebooks with two gigabyte of RAM. I'm sure you can still get budget Chromebooks with two gigabyte of RAM. But personally speaking, I would try and avoid two gigabyte if you can. If you are just buying it just to surf the internet, word processing, stuff like that, then you'll be fine with two gigabyte of RAM. But don't expect it to be that fast. I wouldn't expect it to use Android apps very well with two gigabyte of RAM. So ideally what you should be looking for when buying a budget Chromebook is four gigabyte of RAM. Four gigabyte of RAM is absolutely perfect for a budget Chromebook. You wouldn't want any more than four gigabyte of RAM because the Intel Siren processor is gonna work with a four gigabyte of RAM just fine. Any more, it, it's, it's gonna bottleneck. So you don't need any more than four gigabyte of RAM. And most budget Chromebooks do come with four gigabyte of RAM anyway. So that's what you should definitely be looking for. When it comes to storage, it, it, it's, it's difficult because if, you, if you're gonna buy a Chromebook that supports Android apps, and a lot most of them do today, then when it comes to storage, with budget Chromebooks, you do get a lot of them with 32 gigabyte of storage. That's okay, it's not too bad, but don't expect to be able to install hundreds of Android apps to a 32 gigabyte of storage because you won't be able to. So ideally, 64 gigabyte of storage would be more preferred. However, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be put off buying a budget Chromebook if the only difference is there's 32 gigabyte versus 64 gigabyte of storage. I don't think it's as critical as the RAM, for example. So I wouldn't let that put you off. But ideally, if you can, go for 64 gigabyte of storage. If not, 32 gigabytes, you know, that's fine. And also bear in mind, if you're buying a budget Chromebook and you are concerned about the storage, you should be saving most of your files in the cloud anyway. And as long as it's got a micro SD slot, which is something you should look for, then you can add further storage, but you cannot install Android apps on that in, um, SD card. It's only your internal storage. So do bear that in mind. So now we come on to the display. Personally, I think the display is one of the most important factors when buying any type of laptop. And this is where you will see some corners cut on a lot of budget Chromebooks. And I would say this is the most important thing you need to look for when buying a budget Chromebook. It depends on the size, obviously. You get a lot of budget Chromebooks on 11.6 inch screen, which is fine. And you get a lot of budget Chromebooks with a 14 inch screen, which is also absolutely fine. When it comes to resolution, you will see a lot of people comment on the fact that they're not too happy about buying this it's a particular budget Chromebook because it doesn't support full HD resolution. And by that, I mean 1920 by 1080 1080p. 1080p, that's a full HD screen. Um, now, in relation to that, it's true, but it depends on the size of the display. If you're buying a 14 inch display, then yes, ideally you want it to have a 1080p resolution. It's not, it's not the end of the world if it doesn't, but ideally that's what you really should be looking for. However, when it comes to 11.6 inch display or a display around that size, but that's just standard size really. Uh, when it comes to the 11.6 inch display, you shouldn't be expecting a 1080p resolution on a budget Chromebook. And there's a lot of people commenting that it doesn't have 1080p, so I would never buy it. Well, no, but if you want 1080p, you've got to spend a lot more. Because smaller displays to, to support 1080p costs more than a bigger display to support 1080p. So yes, you should definitely ideally be looking for a 1080p on a 14 inch, but on 11.6, do not expect 1080p on a budget Chromebook, because it's very unlikely you will get it. You will get 768 rather than 1080, which is absolutely fine because it is a smaller display as well, so it won't necessarily look that bad. But on a 14 inch display, then yes, you would see that it wouldn't, wouldn't look that great on a 768 compared to a 1080p. So that's something to bear in mind. That's the first thing when it comes to displays, the resolution. Now the main issue with me, with budget Chromebooks, is the panel. And it really frustrates me when you see Chromebooks released, which look great, the build quality looks great, the display looks decent, it's got nice thin bezels around the display, so it looks like a kid's computer. The main issue is if the panel is not 
decent and it, it's really really frustrating my first ever chromebook i brought back in 2011 had an amazing display uh, back then i'll admit it i didn't know much about chromebooks because they'd only just been launched i was lucky enough to buy a chromebook that did come with a good display and when i looked into it further at the time i realized it's because it had an ips panel and that's vital an ips panel is going to mean that the display is going to be pretty decent quality and the reasons for that is because an ips display the viewing angles is so much better so if you've got your chromebook right in front of you that's generally okay but then if, if you haven't got an ips panel what you'll notice is if you if the display is slightly down so it's not completely looking straight at you You'll, you'll struggle to perhaps see the imagery and it's the same if you're on the side to the Chromebook as well so if there's someone else wanting to share what you're watching on the screen they'll really struggle if it's not an IPS display so if I was you I would always only buy a Chromebook if it's got an IPS panel now that doesn't mean that you can't get Chromebooks without an IPS panel which is still okay if you can get them and it's really cheap then okay that's fine but do bear in mind do not expect to be blown away by that display because it can be really frustrating when you've got a tm panel on a laptop compared to an ips panel you will notice the difference the amount of comments i've seen on website stores where people have bought a chromebook and then sent it back saying it was okay but i didn't like the display the reason for that is because it was not an ips display that doesn't mean that all IPS displays are equal. Obviously, it depends on the manufacturer. Some manufacturers have their own technology as well, and that will make a difference. The brightness of the display will also make a difference. However, I would definitely say, as long as you make sure it's got an IPS panel, you are going to expect a certain standard. So that's one thing I would definitely consider. When you're buying a budget Chromebook, always try to ensure it's got an IPS display, because that's the one what lets most people down. Two more things to think about when looking at the display is, and this depends on whether you will be using Android apps or whether the Chromebook actually supports Android apps, is whether it's touchscreen. If you are gonna be looking to use Android apps, then you want to have a Chromebook that has a touchscreen. You do get manufacturers still bringing out budget Chromebooks today that does not support touchscreen. I haven't got a clue why, I just do not understand it because using Android apps without being able to touch the screen is, hor is just horrible, it's not a nice experience. So if you are looking to use Android apps, definitely make sure it's got a touch screen. Also you need to consider, are you just looking for a laptop or are you looking for a two-in-one hybrid Chromebook? A laptop speaks for itself, but a two-in-one hybrid Chromebook means you can use it as a laptop, but you can also spin the display around so you can use it as a tablet as well. I don't think that's really that important. I know a lot of people do love the hybrids and they are great, don't get me wrong, but I would say the touchscreen is more important. So yes, if you want a hybrid, obviously look to make sure it's a hybrid, but if you're not that bothered about that, but you do want to use Android apps, at least make sure it's got a touchscreen display. Another thing you need to look at is the keyboard. You want something that's really responsive. The only way you're gonna be able to tell that really is to watch videos on YouTube, review videos, or review websites. Have a look on there, see what they say about the keyboard. If you do a lot of typing, it's important that the keyboard's really responsive, and that's fine. Also, you might want to consider where it's got a backlit display. Not everybody's gonna be interested in that, but it's something to consider as well. Not all budget Chromebooks will have a backlit display. I don't think it's the end of the world if they don't. However, if you do do a lot of typing, just to make sure that the keyboard is pretty decent. Don't expect it to be amazing because you are buying a budget Chromebook, but you do want something you, that you can at least type on. Another thing is the ports and the connections on the Chromebook. That is important to an extent. If you want to add extra storage, you wanna make sure it's got a micro SD card or something similar to that. If you want to use headphones, you might want to have a look to see if it's got a headphone jack. However, that's not necessarily the end of the world. If it's got Bluetooth, most people have Bluetooth headphones today. You can use Bluetooth headphones. USB ports, it depends on what peripherals you've already got. If you've got older type um, hardware that you use that uses the older USB connection, then maybe you need to have a look to make sure it does support the older type USB connections. 
The more modern connection is USB type C and that's something that I would recommend to look for. However, that does depend on what you've got. If you've only got old hard hardware that doesn't support USB type C, uh, you're not looking to buy any hardware that's going to support USB type C, then it's not the end of the world. The only thing you do need to bear in mind, USB type C does allow you to charge and it also allows you to connect your Chromebook to an external display. If it doesn't have USB type C, the only other way you could connect to an external display is if it had something like a HDMI port, which you don't see as much now on Chromebooks in 2020. Okay, I hope you liked the video and you now know what to look for when buying a budget Chromebook in 2020. If you did, as I said earlier, please like below and subscribe to the channel. And thanks for watching.